affected by these guys here. It's uh, X Gimme, or and they asked me if I wanted to review this. This is the Mogo 2. This is a portable projector. These guys are extremely popular overseas uh, in the East and even in Europe and that too. Um, a lot of people I'd say in Canada and North America don't know about this as much, but these guys are very, very popular and they make super premium projector. These aren't like those cheap little projectors you see online, you know, on Amazon and that, and they're like 30 bucks or hundred bucks or something like that. And they set on fire, they melt, you know, they break after six months or something like that. That's not this unit here. This is a very high-end premium projector. Slide right there, so it outputs 400 lumens, which should get quite bright. And apparently it has really good colors as well. They say that it has 90% DCI-P, which is a little weird to, it's a little bit harder to, you know, estimate that on a projector versus a pixel um, on a screen, but it should have good colors overall. Um, I've seen some online reviews, you know, on Amazon and their own website and that, and especially on Amazon, the reviews are really solid. It actually has speakers built in too. So, you know, it has two built-in eight watt speakers. So like I said, you know, you could hook these up to your home stereo, that type of thing. You could have the larger units. This one here is meant to be taken with you. If you're going to, you know, get together, you want to play games together, you know, get like an old school game party or something like that going. It has some other cool features too. It has Android TV. I think it's listed on here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So it has uh, well, Google Play TV. So Android TV, basically. So you're going to have, uh, has Chromecast built in. You have a controller there. Nice little controller. App Store, Google Play, whatever. Okay. It comes with batteries. It's always nice. Triple A's. We have our power brick here. Looks like it's just USB-C, so you know if you have a USB-C charger that you take with you for one device, just take one USB-C with you. This one here, nice all-metal frame here. So this is a nice metal frame here, so you know if you accidentally ding it or something, it's not going to be scratched. That's the projector there in the front there. We have like a little bit of a glossy look to it. This is just well designed and doesn't serve any purpose, but it just looks really, really nice there. Nice big projector there. That's probably for alignment. This thing has auto alignment, so uh, my assumption is it's going to look at your screen, and then if you're your alignment is off or something like you know tilted or something like that should that should theoretically read it and fix it for you uh, top there nice kind of soft touch plastic textured power button bottom oh, you can mount it so the bottom actually has like a, a little mount thing so I could take off my screen here I could take off my uh, recording device here and put this on a little mount if you find that you know flat isn't good you can mount it up like that and I actually am gonna do that because I have um, something like this that I can mount because you know this not necessarily your walls not necessarily going to be completely flush right in front of you so you know you can set it up you could always just set it on something but you know I'm going to probably put it on a little mount or something like that on the back here we have radiator basically to get the heat off the whole thing looks like it's going to pull heat off too that's always an issue with these type of projectors especially portable small projectors is heat you need they can get hot very fast there's a you know big bulb in there um, and you're pro processing as well so you want to get the heat off so this should help get the heat off quite a bit USB-C there, that's going to power it. Uh, USB, um, so if you have USB content, you can put that in there. HDMI, which will be your standard hookup, basically. Just plug in your laptop, plug in your Xbox, your PS5, whatever. Even if you have like an ROG Ally or something, you can plug it in through that with like a little dongle. Headphones, so you can hook this up, you know, to headphones if you're sitting there, uh, you know, by yourself just playing games or something like that. Or, or you could hook it up to like a speaker system. You know, if you have dedicated speakers, just plug them in there. But again, it does have audio. So it has this big, it's a pretty big speaker in there too. Um, we'll see how that sounds there. It says that it has dual. Okay, this is my temporary solution. I'm not going to be using this permanently. This is actually what I use as a second filming setup there. I want to test this in my office because for one thing, I mean, I'm all set up here and I might actually be using this quite a bit in this office because I have this huge wall here. Um, I used to have a TV here, but it was just, I don't know, it's just weird. I didn't like the formality of having a TV mounted there. I love the idea of just having this. I can just set it up here whenever I need. Um, and have basically a gigantic TV type screen rather than doing this. I can hook up my computer into it as well and use it as almost a TV workstation there. Okay, and you can see how this is actually angled. Before I had it kind of like that, and watch this, it's, uh, it'll figure out what it's doing here. Auto key zone in progress. See that? Super cool. So I'm actually intentionally holding this off on an angle. Um, and uh, so, you know, you don't have to have the perfect angle on your projector. See that there? It knows that it moved. It must have some type of um, like it must have some type of detector that it's moving in there. And then what happens as soon as I moved it, it basically was like, nope, you know, you moved your uh, projector here. We need to rotate it for you. And now once again, it's more or less perfectly flat there. Okay, it's asking me if I just want to set this up through my, uh, asking me if I just want to set this up through my Android phone. I have an Android phone and an iPhone, but we'll do it with the Android phone for now. And, uh, oh, it actually popped up right there, set up device automatically a lot of the times you know my tv actually uses google too so this is kind of nice 
Continue setup on your Mogo. Done. So there you go. And we can see here, you know, standard Android TV. For people who haven't used Android TV or Google TV, um, it's actually very straightforward. I use it, like I said, on my, you know, my actual TV. But, you know, you can add all your, your apps over here. Because um, this is not just, you know, something you're going to hook up for using, like, a, you know, PlayStation 5, Xbox, you know, PC, that kind of thing. This is an actual TV. Um, so, you know, I have all of these. I don't have CTV. I'm Canadian, as you can see here. Uh, holy smokes. There's, like, emulators on here? Look at that. It has a PSP emulator built into it and Drastic emulator, at least Google does. Okay, now it has this uh, focus and correction. I have, my, have it set up. I moved it back a little bit here because I want a larger TV. You know, I want to get up to, this is probably like 65 inches or 60 inches. It's a pretty huge uh, canvas on the wall here. It's hard for you guys to tell. But um, let's get focused here because I moved it back. Um, press da, 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 to enable autofocus. Sure. Let's try it. Let's let them autofocus at first. Press. Okay, it's doing it. You can see there. Painted this wall. Put like weird texturing on it. So there actually is like weird texturing to the wall, which is kind of dumb. Um, if it was a smooth surface, it would probably be fine. But I'm assuming that it's actually picking up some of these weird like divots in the wall, which is unfortunate. But um, I'm giving this thing like the most challenging setup imaginable. Right? So I guess, you know, my eye, oh yeah, it can get way sharper than I thought. I do want to show how quiet this thing is. This is beside my head. Like my head is sitting right here as I'm recording this video. Um, and uh, look at how quiet this is. FYI, my room like floor noise is actually 34. This room is always like 34 or 35 because my PC is on. So very, very, very quiet. There are fans. It's like, it's super, super quiet. It's quieter than any other device in my room. Like, The phone is actually not doing this justice. When they say it has, um, you know, high color range, the DCI-P range, this is very, very vibrant red. Holy smokes. My phone is like, there we go extremely bright and vibrant. Look at that. You could do like color work on this other than the fact that it's on a wall. But this is this is very impressive to be honest. Very, very impressive colors. Super, super vibrant colors. Um, the color range is very impressive. I've seen these things and they're always washed out and kind of crappy looking, um, these projectors. Like this is the furthest thing from that. This is shockingly good. I did not anticipate. This is leaps and bounds above anything I have ever seen in terms of projectors, uh, at home projectors. This is like, this is like what you get in a cinema. It's also fast too. Like the, the processor in this, this is not running off my computer. This is running natively on that projector. So the processor in this is obviously very capable. Um, you know, I'm just streaming video, flipping through video like this on the projector itself. I'm not going on my computer. I'm not using HDMI. This is all running natively on the projector. I have nothing hooked up. I'm not running this through my Android phone. In fact, my Android phone is over there asleep. Um, so, I mean, you can see here, this thing is quick. The processor in this is very fast as well. So it's not like you're getting some slow, sluggish built-in operating system, some slow, sluggish built-in technology. This is very fast. Look at how vivid this is. Uh, if you have headphones, you might want to turn them down. Holy bass. All right, I'm not gonna go any louder. That's already too loud for my ears. It hurts my hurts my ears. Holy bass. Okay. So like if you have this, you're not gonna need a sound bar. Um, it has, sounds incredible. Um, the only negative is this thing potentially might be sitting right beside you. You know, if you're if you're doing, like if you're playing games or something like that, this thing might be sitting directly beside you. I could feel the bass in the side of my head. Just for some context, this is only at 75%. So yeah, it gets really loud. I could turn it up more. That's like 90%, I don't wanna go any louder. 
Yeah. Loud. Oh yeah, and look, you can project on your ceiling. And it, the keystone even works to correct itself. So if you want to, uh, you know, lie in bed and have this beside you and project it on your ceiling and, you know, uh, it does work and it looks perfect, to be honest. I'm kind of holding it with my hand because my, uh, my projector thing is uh, my stand. I don't trust it. I don't want the thing to fall over, but... If you get the pro model, I mean, you'll get native 1080p. So you can see, you know, some of the text there isn't super crisp. Um, this is just the 720p model. Um, more than enough to play, you know, even this is a modern game. I'll do some emulation later too. Um, and those games are designed for that. But uh, yeah, you can see here, I mean, it's, uh, it looks totally fine. Everything is nice and legible, no issues. Um, not noticing any lag at all. Um, no ghosting at all either, you can see there. No ghosting, no tearing. Nothing like that, you don't see no tearing. Uh, there's no ghosting on the actual screen. So, uh, you know, perfectly suited towards fast switch games, you can see here, you know, nice response times, no input lag, no, uh, no ghosting whatsoever. Okay, and here we go. This is the, uh, probably the most compelling uh, use of this here. Playing some couch co-op. This is Wii in this case. Oh. Yeah, there's no input lag on this, and it looks, I mean, these, when you're playing modern, um, you know, AAA titles on Windows, um, 720p might look, it looks okay. It may not, oh my God, it may not look fantastic, but you might want to get yourself, um, you know, like the, the, the HD model for that 1080p, because it'll look more crisp. But to be honest, you know, when you're playing, you know, retro games like this, and you're just doing some couch co-op, couch competitions, whatever. Um, I mean, look at how awesome this plays, and it looks great. I mean, I don't even think we went above, uh, I think that we ran at 480p? It might have run at 720p, I can't remember. But anyways, I mean, it's gonna look fantastic, and this looks perfect on the screen. In some ways, it actually looks better, because when it's too crisp, uh, you know, you play on like a 4K modern TV, it actually gets super pixelated. Um, and you know here I'm not worried about the pixels because uh, you know it gets a little bit of a softening effect on the uh, on the projector here so it actually looks better than running it on my PC on uh, oh, looks better than running it on my PC to be honest in anyway. look at uh, this cheap ass game scumbags kind of stuff the natural smoothening effect um, of 720p rather than running this at like 4k on a 4k tv when you run these type of emulators on a 4k tv or natively you know if i hooked up my actual gamecube here on a 4k screen it looks kind of bad to be honest it looks kind of bad it accepts the signal and then it kind of looks like almost pixelated or something like that whereas here you know you're getting this 4k whereas here you know we're outputting native 720p Okay, so I just paired my uh, Xbox controller there to it. Um, so that's all paired up now. And I can use that to actually navigate now, rather than using the controller if you want, you don't have to, but it's kind of nice to have this set up um, rather than using the remote. It's, I don't know, I just find it more. As a gamer, I'm always looking for very useful new technologies that I can use to basically improve my uh, experience. And what you see here is my ROG Ally. You could hook your ROG Ally or your Steam Deck up to your PC. I mean, that's easy. You just stick it in front of your screen, hook it up there. But if you want to play it you know, on your couch, you can, of course, use it in handheld mode. But what if you want to put it on your TV? Well, you're going to have to set the device over by the TV and then use you know, Bluetooth mouse, keyboard, joystick, whatever. Or you're going to have to run a 12-foot HDMI cable from your TV in the side here run it all the way over to your ROG Ally into some kind of dock. Well, I'm not doing that. I basically have a dongle here 
I have HDMI coming out. I'm actually powering my uh, ROGL. You can see in the corner over there, I'm actually powering it. And that's the thing. This is gonna sit directly beside you or near you, right? You're gonna be sitting on your couch. This projector is probably gonna be, you know, beside your head, beside your shoulder, sitting on a little coffee table beside you or sitting on the coffee table in front of you, projecting on the wall. So all you gotta do is basically plug your ROGL or Steam Deck directly into your, uh, your projector here and you're gonna be able to wire yourself directly into it. You know, you don't have to run a long cable and the sound is gonna be coming from directly in front of you as well. And there we go. How awesome is that? Playing Starfield on my ROG Ally handheld. I'm literally holding my ROG Ally in my hands right now. And I'm playing on my quote unquote TV, my projector. I don't need to have wires running across the room. I don't have to have the ROG Ally hooked up to my TV you know, and then have a Bluetooth controller and a mouse and keyboard and all that stuff. I'm holding my ROG Ally in my hands. This would be the same as a Steam Deck or a Legion Go, right? You're basically turning your handheld into a switch of sorts, right? You just basically plug it into your little projector here and boom, away you go. And I mean, this looks great to be honest. I mean, the ROG Ally is gonna be able to easily put off above 30 FPS in this game here. Um, I've done extensive testing on it, so in a way, it runs better than your Xbox Series X and your Series S because those are locked at hard 30. This game is not locked at hard 30 on this handheld here. And look at that, no frame drops, no tearing. It looks great. To Rachel. How cool is this? ROG Ally, AKA Windows Switch. All made possible because of, okay, I got right through me. All made possible because of this projector. Super cool. Okay, and I just had to just having a look at where you can buy them. So you can see there's a couple different options here. The easiest is actually probably just to buy it through their website. So you see here, this is the Canadian version. So this is gonna be Canadian prices. Uh, we can see, oh, that's a really good price. So $412 Canadian. That's about 300 American, approximately 300 American dollars. So it's on sale. Um, and you can see all the specs there. And this is a super legit company. You know, I'd have no issues buying directly from them. All kinds of stuff. Look at all this stuff. So this is the model that I have here, uh, 412 for an extra couple hundred Canadian. This is Canadian dollars, so 700 Canadian. Um, it's about 500 US dollars. You get the Pro, which then does 1080p. So if you're going to be playing modern games, you know Xbox Series X, PS5, you'd be fine with this. But I'd probably lean into this here. It's still way cheaper than buying, you know, a big big TV or something like that, and it's portable. Um, so I think these are the way to go. For a lot of people, I think this is the buy-in right here, though. It's super compelling. This is the model I have right here. Of course, buy, you know, places like Best Buy. This is US, Best Buy, $5.99 for the Pro. Actually, it's cheaper to buy it on their website for Canadians. So what are my thoughts on the X Gimme Mogo 2 here? It is super, super cool. Um, I'm very happy that they sent this over. I've always kind of wanted to get a projector because a lot of, the, it's just so convenient for things like couch gaming. You saw me doing some emulation on that. I have a lot of retro consoles. I have a closet full of retro consoles, Wii, GameCube, whatever, PS2, all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to always hook those up to my TV. Um, and you know, the resolution on a TV, a 4K TV can actually make the, the games look really bad. Um, this here, the games actually look quite good on this device here. Super, super compelling. You could take this device with you if you're going to any type of you know gaming party or a watch party or something like that. Somebody has a small little TV. I mean, you can get a very large TV out of this very easily. If you're if you're someone who is a student or something like that, you know, you live in a residence, it's very difficult to set up a TV in a residence, if not impossible, obviously. I mean, you just don't have the room, right? I'm sure you have the room for this tiny little guy here. Set that up on you know your nightstand type thing project on your roof if need be. If you don't have the wall space, throw it on your roof, no problem whatsoever, or throw it on one of your walls. And there you go, you can watch Netflix, you can watch YouTube, you can play games. This thing is super, super cool. This right here is gonna be a staple to me. You know, I, it's just perfect. I can just whip out a real, rip out one of my retro consoles, plug it into this that's already gonna be hooked up to the side of me and away I go. I don't need to mess around with my TV, HD upscalers, all this nonsense. You know, I just plug it in here and away I go. Super, super compelling. And if I go to someone's house, I actually have a friend, my partner and I have a friend who doesn't even own a TV, which is crazy to me. So if we ever wanted to watch Netflix or something at their place, like what are we gonna do? On their laptop, their little 13 inch MacBook, I could literally take this with me. It weighs nothing. Sit down, power on, plug in, boom, we're watching a movie. And the sound is here, great sound, 
No need to mess around with anything, so it's super compelling. I think this is an awesome device, and I'm very, very happy they sent it over. I think for the price, too, it's totally justified.